Sup guys, Heeking here bringing you uh, the latest uh, manga chapter review for Boruto Naruto Next Generations chapter 68. So yeah, uh, this month's Boruto chapter. Um, I honestly forgot what happened last chapter. Uh, I think I think Boruto, yeah, Boruto came back to life. Uh, Momoshiki repaired him and saved him and Cold uh, went back to be with Ada and uh, Demon and he left something on Shikamaru, which will probably help him infiltrate the leaf now. So yeah, we kind of ended on that. And uh, yeah, this week, this month's chapter, uh, honestly, I'm not so enthusiastic for these for these manga chapters. Like when it when it comes to Boruto, I don't really feel it. Do you know what I mean? Like I honestly prefer the anime, but I haven't watched the anime in weeks now, uh, mostly because of the anime canon arc that we have. And it's not because I don't want to see it. It's because uh, uh, knowing exactly how slow it's going to be, I'm waiting for it to sort of build up and end, and then I can just binge watch it afterwards. That's usually what I do. Uh, and plus, I, I'm just, I get tired of the constant annoyance, like with people going, "Oh no, when's the manga kind of going to stop?" Blah blah blah. It's just, it's getting irritating at this point. Everything you see in the anime is canon. It's not filler. It's canon. There are good. There is bad. You know. And uh, in this case, obviously, you know, I'm not going to judge it until I've seen the whole thing. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. But uh, yeah, for the manga wise, um, it's a pretty good chapter this month, I think. But. Uh, it, again, you can feel the small scale of it. Like, we have so many characters, right? And we never see them. We never see their reactions. We never see what they're thinking. Uh, especially, like, for example, like, you know, this stuff has happened with uh, Naruto and uh, Boruto and Kawaki, and we don't see Hinata's reaction to him. Uh, they're keeping everything hush hush, obviously, for good reasons, but still, it's like. I want to see other characters' reactions and what they're thinking and what their thought process is. And for a series called Next Generations, we don't really focus on the next generation. It's mostly the Boruto and Kowaki show. Sorodan, even Mitsuki, for example, have just been sort of thrown aside and we don't really get what's going on with them. But enough about that, let's go through this chapter. Uh, so we start off back in the leaf. Uh, we've got Dr. You know, the Kaketsui there, I think, and I think that's Sai as well in the room with them, along with Amado, and he's, and you know, the, you know, Boruto's pretty much told them what happened, and that he's been resurrected, essentially. Yeah, and he's basically like, you're saying you were resurrected, using karma, and Boruto's just replying, you know, he's got the mark, you can see the mark, he's got, he's got the karma mark now on his chest, that obviously Momoshiki used, you know, his last remaining 80% of data to repair the damage there, so yeah, it's like a tattoo or a scar now for Boruto there on his chest. And he's like, that's what Momoshiki said. I can't blame you for not believing me. And he's looking at the karma in his hand. And he's like, apparently about 82% of Momoshiki's data, blah, 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 had already finished extraction. But he used the remaining 80% to rebuild the destroyed parts of my body. And Kakutsu is like, goodness, uh, since, well, since they're able to digitize components of their own flesh, I suppose converting the data into another person's component isn't much of a stretch. No matter how mind blowing that possibly sounds, and Mardo, a model just smoking his cigar there, like not a care in the world. If Boruto died, Momoshiki would lose his vessel, and his soul would be extinguished. Even an Atsutsuki can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. Hmm? So Momoshiki sacrificed part of himself to save Boruto and escape destruction. And then sighs like, yet yeah, while this, while his soul is still intact, it means Momoshiki lacks the data needed to cur to construct his body, right? And Kaguya is like, yes. In fact, since he'll never regain that data, he'll never be able to resurrect again, right? So it seems a silver lining, you could say. However, the problem of him taking all Boruto's consciousness from time to time still remains. We still don't have an outright solution for that. So yeah. That's one of the bigger reveals there, because I assumed last chapter that it meant that Momoshiki couldn't take over anymore. He couldn't uh, uh, use Boruto's body to resurrect and make his own body again. But what we get here, what we get the revelation here, is that Momoshiki can still technically take over Boruto's mind and take control of Boruto's body. He won't have a body of his own. He's still the spirit imprisoned inside Boruto's body, but he can still influence and take control if circumstances allow it, I think. However, Boruto then says something here that sort of nullifies that entire reasoning, and he's like, he's like, and Kaiotsuki first says, but the meds have been more effective than expected. As long as he keeps taking them, we should be able to suppress Momoshiki's dom dom domination long term. And Boruto's like, nope, I don't need them anymore. And he's like, huh? And everyone's looking at him, he's like, how to put it? I feel like something's changed from before. 
uh, it's happened it's hard to describe but I have this feeling that I can channel his power better now so yeah even a model is like curious and interested about what he means by this so I think I think what we get from here from this confirmation is that Boruto no longer has to take the supplements from a model and Momoshiki can't take control of him because now Boruto has more control and he can use Momoshiki's power now but I still feel like the influence will be there because uh, you have to think about it like it, it, this can't be a good thing for Momoshiki, do you know what I mean? Like, he had, he had two choices. Either he allows Boruto to die and for us he dies and his soul gets extinguished, or he saves Boruto but he makes himself a prisoner. Like, what's better, death or being imprisoned? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you know, dying and being gone or just like, I guess, I guess he wanted to live. Like, obviously the Tsutsukis are all about we want to survive no matter what. But to go that far to make yourself a prisoner, I can't help but feel there has to be some sort of back door there. Do you know what I mean? There has to be something there that Momoshiki can maybe influence or use if the time is right. Uh, so it can't be all that, do you know what I mean? Like, because honestly, wouldn't you prefer to just take death instead than being stuck in some kid for years on years until he eventually dies? Or is this a case of where, because they do say his body is now like fully Utsutsuki, so what I get from that is that Boruto is now immortal, so he can't die, and for us, you know, Momoshiki can't die, he will continue living on as this, you know, spirit or vessel inside, inside Boruto essentially, so yeah, uh, we're kind of curious to see if we can get some sort of confirmation on that. But that's a very interesting way to think about it, because if Boruto is now immortal, then eventually everyone he loves and cares about is going to pass by and die around him, either from natural causes, old age, sickness, or even war, do you know what I mean? But like, yeah, uh, that's kind of depressing when you think about it. Maybe that's what it means when, when Momoshiki first told him, you know, he sees his future and these eyes of his will take everything. Maybe that's what it means, like, he's going to live forever and everyone he cares about is going to be gone like that's really that's really depressing when you think about it but we then cut to Kawaki and Shikamaru uh, and uh, what's his name the torturer I I Ibuke I think and Naruto and Sumire are in there in the hospital and they're looking at Kawaki who's basically unconscious right now uh, uh, Sumaru confirms that he's not in danger he's lost a lot of chakra but he's fine he's almost fully self healed thanks to the nano machines in his blood uh, and then uh, she's like, you know, uh, Shimmeray asks why. She asks, I better be best, it, it, but it'd be best to check him out in depth at the lab. Um, why did you ask for me rather than Mr. Omodo? And Shikamaru's like, we need to confirm a few things with that bastard first. Until then, we can't let him near Kawaki. So long as there are no health issues, he stays here. And Ibiki's like, you're really planning to leave him unbound when he possesses so much power. So yeah, like... And Shikamaru's like, the thing is, we can't restrain him even if we wanted to. He could just shrink himself with a Sukunai Hikona and get free. And he can absorb any seeding jutsu using karma. It's no simple thing to physically bind him right now. Conversely, it'd be real bad if we end up antagonizing him. Fortunately, his wish is simple. As long as Naruto is safe, he'll have no beef with us. So yeah. Kawaki is this unstoppable force at this point and restraining him, imprisoning him isn't gonna do crap. This guy is so powerful he can literally escape because, you know, Naruto is not powerful anymore, Sasuke is not powerful. These guys have lost the abilities that made them basically gods. Kawaki and Boruto now, technically speaking, are the new gods of, of this ninja world right now and the gods of Konoha, really, if you think about it. And yeah, you want to antagonize the kid who can pretty much uh, one-hit kill you, given the chance? Yeah, no. So, it, it makes sense that they're, they, they're going to keep it as is. They're going to be chill with him. But, uh, yeah, Naruto, there's obviously something going on with Naruto there. He, you know, he's not... You can clearly see on his face that he, he doesn't look as concerned. He looks concerned, but there's something going on there. And Shikamaru continues his conversation saying that no, all we can do is have faith, trust him and make sure he stays on our side. That's if we want to stick to peaceful solutions, of course. And Naruto's like, huh, good. That's how Konoha Village does things. So yeah, he even he's, he's agreeing with Shikamaru. But even Shikamaru can realize that there's something wrong with Naruto there. And he's like, so you're okay with it, Naruto? And Shikamaru even gives him a look and he's like, yeah, we'll have a nice long talk when he wakes up. And even Sumire realizes like there's something off of what how Naruto says that. And you can tell Naruto is very, very, very angry. He saw Kawaki, you know, the the the, the kid that he promised to protect and he's adopted as his stepson, kill basically his stepbrother. 
like going that far. And you can tell that uh, Naruto is very upset and angry about this. Like, like this might change the relationship and care that he ha or love that he has for Kawaki at this point. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen when Kawaki wakes up. Like, is Naruto gonna be very angry with him, or like, is he gonna be his usual self and you know hug Kawaki and tell him, like, I'm not, you know, I'm upset, but I'm not angry with you, and I get why you did it. Like, it's okay. Like. But he's like, don't ever do that again, or I will kill you, or like kill you. Maybe I don't know. Like, it, it, I'm very curious to see what Naruto's response to Kawaki is going to be when he wakes up. Like, that's one of the more hype things I'm looking forward to, specifically when it comes to the future chapters going forward. So yeah, Shikamaru and Sumire leave the uh, hospital bed, and she's like, uh, did something happen with Lord Seventh? And Shikamaru's like, what do you mean? I hope it's just my imagination, but he seems to be brooding over something. And she goes, just like, he just got back this morning after narrowly escaping death. He's exhausted. You're right. Please forgive me. And then we see Sasuke finally show up. Where was this guy? You know what I mean? Like, you know, where was he when all that crap was going on outside the village? And he's like, I have intel. It concerns Colt's whereabouts. And we cut to Shikamaru and uh, Sasuke talking in an office. And obviously, this is going to be set up for the future manga chapters. Uh, but possibly even maybe anime related canon that we're going to get later on uh, because it involves a Boros cult. So, yeah, you know, we, we get told about one of, you know, Shikamaru was talking, is like one of Boros cult facilities. I thought we'd hit them all. There's a hidden structure on the edge of the land of snow in an area considered taboo even by the locals. It's apparently a secret facility that only a few of the cult's top brass even know about. It seems they engage in, in, in human rituals, human experimentation, and have known to Kara, even scientific ninja tool R&D. Of particular interest is that it was also a facility for disposing cyborgs that Jigen had ordered to be scrapped. I see. Sounds significantly sketchy. Any conclusive evidence that code is there? And, you know, Sasuke is like, nothing definite, but there's an acquaintance of codes there, a man named Bug. Got it, all right. I'll order a deployment since we have no other leads. Sasuke is like, I heard about what Kawaki did. Is it true? And he's like, yeah, he killed Boruto. Even if it was to stop Momoshiki, he did it right in front of me and Naruto. Thankfully, Naruto. Naruto out there. Yeah, thankfully, Boruto turned out to be okay, but the only other ones who know about it are Inu. Ino, sorry, Ino, Sai, Amado, and Katatsuki were still deciding how to move forward. Where's Boruto? Sasuke asks. So, where yeah, we get this big revelation that they're keeping this thing very hidden, very quiet, because I think for obvious reasons, if everyone found out that Kawaki killed Boruto, or at least tried to kill him, it's gonna cause very bad blood between Kawaki and the other villagers and the other students, maybe. Plus, uh, I like to think, you know, I, I think it's just the mong it's just the manga's way of keeping all of those characters off screen because the manga never shows those characters. I mean, we've never seen Metal Lee, for example, in in, in in these future chapters. And besides, I guess the examination early on, uh, we've not seen any other characters. We've not seen, you know, we've only seen Sumire from the anime appear in the manga. Like, we've not seen any other anime original characters appear. It's like the other teams don't exist, basically. We've only seen Shigadai, Chocho, and Inochin, and that's it. That, that's it. That's, those are the only team. That's the only team of ninjas that exist right now, currently. Like, we don't know about the other teams. Um, even with Sai, for example, in this chapter, and, he, and he's supposed to be the head of his own little unit with, uh, what's his name? Uh, we don't even get those characters so in the background, for example. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a nice way of saying. Oh yeah, all, 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 all the rest of the characters they don't need to know. Like they don't, need to, they don't need to get involved in the main story. It is kind of problemat uh, problematic that they, they haven't told Hinata, for example. Like you, you'd think she would have to know about this because uh, you know she's if she's gonna have if she's gonna continue having Kalki in a house for Christ's sake, you know she's gonna have this kid who basically killed her son. Like, like that would be awkward as well. Maybe that's one of the reasons they're not telling her either because then that there won't be that influence there. There won't be that mindset of like, oh my God, uh, I need to keep an eye on him 24/7 now. But it's like no. So yeah, where are they going to go? What's going to happen next? Interesting question. Uh, and as we continue on, uh, Shikamaru is just like, you know, Boruto, he should be with his friends, including Sarada. Go see them. And we cut to the, uh, basically the ice space where Ada is with Cold, and Domon's riding on Cold's back like always. And she can see the future, guys, remember. She can see the future, and she can see that, you know, Boruto is alive, because she says, I see, so that's what happened. Be thankful, Cold. Your precious ten tail sacrifice Boruto is still alive. He was revived using Momoshiki's karma. Code's like, he's speechless, he's surprised. And he's like, revived? Are you serious? 
Uh, and Gudemon, D Daemon is like, hey Cold, maybe like a zombie. And then Ada's like, moreover along the way, it seems the rest of the car was compressed data was extracted, meaning that Boruto is fully Otsutsuki now. Mm. This this piques uh, Cold's interest now because maybe it means that now he can use Boruto to feed to the Ten Tails. Somehow they shared an exchange that I can't see directly with my uh, Serigan clairvoyance. I wonder if he's able to communicate with Momoshiki on some sort of spiritual plane. And Cole's just like, unforeseen uh, would be an understatement, but I'll take that uh, piece of good fortune. Guess it was meant to be. And then we get this moment between Ada and Code that pretty much solidifies that, you know, going forward, it seems that Ada is going to be sort of the big villain here in this arc and not Code like we thought. You know, Code is now just a pawn. You know, he might have his old plans, but really, him awaking Ada has caused some unexpected uh, circumstances and yeah at this point you can really tell from this conversation as well who the big powerhouse is because she pretty much says you're lucky that Boruto is alive but I'm honestly fed up with the multiple grandstanding acts you displayed you took it too far especially in using my little brother without my permission and Cole's just like I didn't really have any other option did I and she's like listen your job is to bring Kawaki to me and in return, I'll help you regain your power to aid your own goals, since you're useless to me this way you are right now. However, if I determine that even after you gain or you gain your strength, you're still useless, incompetent, or simply just a hindrance, we siblings have absolutely no qualms about disposing of you. Consider yourself warned. So yeah, Ada is terrifying. Ada is terrifying, and you can clearly tell that she is the stronger one. And the fact that even she says that even if the cold gets his limiters removed, if he still proves useless, and she thinks that she will get rid of him. So even if cold, you know, ends up having no limiters and gets his full strength back, it appears that Ada is still stronger than him. It appears that her and Damon are still stronger than him. So yeah, cold is pretty much just you know a, a scrap boy getting by essentially, like. It does feel like we're going to get some sort of confrontation between these two because Cold is going to go all, all out in trying to get Kawaki, but maybe now that Boruto is fully in a Tsutsuki, he's going to probably aim on getting Boruto now and, and using him to feed to the Ten Tails while Ada gets her chance with whatever she wants to do with Kawaki. And as we continue on, you know, Cold's like, you, you mean we're not even comrades how sad that's business for you if you don't produce results you'll lose even this sad relationship and and a uh, cold is just like cold is like did i not mention that i already took measures that's all that's left is the timing and we get this big revelation which was obvious to everyone else since last chapter that Cold ended up putting one of these claw marks onto Shikamaru's back. Now, I assumed this was going to be on his clothes, maybe, or something. But no, it's literally on Shikamaru's neck. And we can see Cold's ear. You know, he's touching himself and, he, and his ear comes out of Shikamaru. And he can hear and he can listen. And he can basically spy, essentially. And Shikamaru is going somewhere. And, um, yeah, a lot of people are pretty much like, man, Shikamaru is dumb as hell. They really nerfed him. Like, uh, the fact that he couldn't tell that, uh, you know, he's got a claw mark on him. But... This chapter proves that that's not the case. Shikamaru is not nerfed. Maybe his decision in what he does here in this chapter is a bit dumb. But he's definitely not nerfed. He's still as smart as he ever is for the most part. Uh, which is a good thing. But we'll get to that uh, stupid part when we do. So we see Shikamaru enter Amado's lab basically. And he's like, well, what's the lowdown on Boruto? And Amado responds saying, it sounded far-fetched at first, but the proof is in the pudding. The blood analysis aligns with his explanation. And Momoshiki, can we definitely say he can't resurrect anymore? Yeah, it is 100% impossible. So yeah, Momoshiki can't resurrect one of them. That's sorted. That 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 sort of plot line thread is now done. And then Shikamaru's like, good. That's that's great actually. By the way, and he grabs a model from the back, pulling him up, and he's like, hey, you know what I want to ask. That's right about Kawaki's, you know, karma. So yeah, how did Kawaki get the karma back? And then we cut to Boruto, in the, you know, wherever he is in the waiting room or hospital, wherever, with a Sarada and Mitsuki. So yeah, reunion guys. No Konohomaru though. So you know, Kon Konohomaru is no good. So obviously, because in the anime they even explain that they're not they're not Team Seven anymore. He's not part of the team anymore. Since since Sarada is now a tuning, she's the captain now. But uh, yeah, we get this moment with Sarada and Mitsuki, and these guys don't know the truth. They don't know what's happened. 
and she's like, it really doesn't hurt or anything it's like at all. And it's like, hey, watch your hands. Well, it was a pretty close call, but as you can see, I'm fine, though that bastard Cold got away. So they've basically lied. Boruto and the others have lied, saying that it was Cold who tried to kill him. And that he got lucky, you know, Momoshiki reviving him. They're not saying that it was uh, Kawaki. And Mitsuki, you know, Mitsuki seems confused. He's like, question, why did Cold try to kill you when he wanted to feed you alive to Ten Tails? And he's like, uh, you see, that was... So, okay, well, Cold still wanted to feed Boruto, despite the fact he wasn't 100% Ototsuki. Okay, so... Maybe, maybe he's, I don't know, maybe, uh, that's going to be a bit confusing, I guess. Uh, he's got at least two choices now, Kawaki or Boruto, in terms of who he wants to feed. But okay, he could have fed Boruto at any time, okay. I, I forgot that part, but uh, yeah, and uh, we get this little flashback with Shikamaru telling him not to tell anyone that it was Kawaki that killed him. Um, and then Boruto is like, maybe he couldn't control himself. It didn't seem like he thinks too far ahead. And Sarada is like, either way, you've become fully Otsutsuki, right? Are you going to be alright together? The way this conversation goes, though, with Sarada and Boruto, I really don't like it. It's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of the manga. Like, the way the interactions happen with certain characters, you know, it's not very, um, how do I put it? You know, Sarada's smarter, Mitsuki is smarter, and these guys aren't questioning what happened. Like, it's like, oh yeah, Cole did it? Okay, okay. Uh, there should be more of a suspicion there, but there isn't, and it's, uh, it's really annoying when you think about it. Uh, and and, and Sarada's just like, that's not what I meant. I'm saying you need to be extra careful. What if you're attacked when you're by yourself? And Sarada's right, and Sasuke ends up coming into the room. He can un he can appear unexpectedly. Don't go anywhere alone, even within the village. Though I want to talk, and old man Sasuke, dad. And not just Boruto. Now that now that Kawaki has enough power to challenge Cold, Cold will likely stop at nothing to get the limiters on his power removed, which, which, which likely makes his first target old man Amada. So yeah, these guys realize that Cold is definitely going to be coming for Amada, and that's when we cut back to him and Shikamaru, and he, you know, Shikamaru trying to get the answers, you know, the answers that we all want as well, like, how and why, it's like, you restored Kawaki's karma, implanted it on your own without his consent, no less, why? It's simple, he fundamentally loves karma, I probably wouldn't get his consent, and yet he desired power enough to protect Lord Hokage and chase off enemies. Either way, in order for the karma to manifest, his intention was absolutely, his intent was absolutely essential. In short, Kaki himself chose this path. This is the result he wished for. What if he didn't have it when he needed it? That's why I implanted it ahead of time. Wasn't the reason why you were able to survive this latest crisis because you had Kaki's karma? Am I wrong? Don't dodge the question at hand. Setting aside the result, what you did was not for Konoha's or Kaki's benefit. If you ask me, you seem obsessed with Kawaki's karma itself. Why? So yeah, before we can get an answer to this very pitiful, important question, Code ends up coming out of Shikamaru's back, you know, shocking all of them. He's on the ceiling now and he's like, sorry to interrupt, but I didn't want to waste this prime opportunity. And Amada is shocked by this. He didn't expect this Code, And then we get this shot with Ada, this panel with Ada, and she's like, you fool. The conversation was just getting interesting, and yeah, she's right, it was getting interesting, and you can just tell that this is sort of a breaking the fourth wall at the audience. We we're finally going to get some sort of explanation or answer as to why Amada is doing what he's doing, and it's ruined by Cold, or in this case, uh, <laughs> Kishi Kishimoto writing it, like, oh, we're going to have Cold up here, screw getting answers at the moment, like, yeah, so, yeah, things are going bad, and Cold basically swipes Shikamaru into a wall, and even Amada's concerned by Shikamaru, man. Like, like clearly, this isn't this isn't a dude who wants to hurt these guys. Like, whatever whatever his principles are, whatever his goals are, I do feel like maybe he is he is trying to be a good guy, but he's maybe doing things sneakily in in the bad wrong ways, if that makes sense. So Cold ends up grabbing Amada by the neck, and it's like, yeah, it's been a while, blah blah blah. Now recite the limiters of my uh, uh, power. You don't you don't want to get hurt, do you? can't believe you just showed up here. You'll be, yeah, he's like, you'll be, yeah, the, the sensory units are going to sense it. Eno senses it. We cut to Eno sensing it in the room, and they all realize that, yeah, you know, this chakra, cold, you know, he, he's in Omada's lab. So before anything can happen, though, Shikamaru ends up, you know, talking to Eno by the mind transfer. It's like, yeah, he's here, right in front of uh, in front of me. Damn it, we'll send reinforcements. And he's like, no, hold on. Just inform Naruto and the others. Don't send anyone here yet. And he's like, why? He showed up because it's just us. I don't want to provoke him into running off. Let me handle it. So yeah, Shikamaru at this point clearly has some sort of plan. Uh, you know, people are probably going to be like shouting, outraged. Oh, they nerfed it. But no, there's something going on here that only Shikamaru knows. 
and we see what that is. Stop it here. So yeah, as we continue the chapter, we see Shikamaru being big-brained, as always. Uh, he's not been nerfed. He ends up using his shadow, para uh, you know, shadow jutsu to basically tie bind uh, Cold. And Cold's basically like, it's useless. I can still move my fingertips enough to slash his core head open. Hey, Omada, you know my personality. I'd, r I'd hurry if I were you. So yeah, this guy is literally going to kill Omada if he doesn't remove the limiters, I guess. And he's like, you know, you wouldn't, you what, you thought I wouldn't notice the claw mark on the back of my neck that I'd fall for such a transparent trap. So yeah, Shikamaru showing us that he isn't an idiot. He realized what what was on his neck. He realized, and then Ko realizes, oh, this guy knew. So why the hell did he come to a model of all people when he knows that's what I'm trying to get? And then we cut to the coffin. Remember that coffin that Amado brought with him a few chapters back and there was clearly a cyborg or something in there that was supposed to help Konoha? Well, it, it opens up. We, we see we see Shikamaru basically look at the coffin and he's like, it's showtime. Wake up, a Bronco. And the coffin box lid flies up and someone bursts out and we get reunited and reintroduced to Delta. So yeah, Delta is back and now she's got the Konoha at least a version of the Konoha symbol on her forehead and even Cold is shocked by this, Is like Delta because the last time we saw her, Omoda shot her down, right? And we saw that she had several bodies, I think she had like three bodies maximum, one of them got destroyed by Naruto and she was using the second one which then got deactivated by Omoda and it could be a case that Omoda just took the third body and her memory or personality with him and he's implanted in this and he's reprogrammed her basically but uh yeah, she's definitely 100% sort of like a cyborg. She's not like half human or half cyborg. Now, I think she's full on, full on, full on cyborg who is under Amada's control. Uh, you know, a lot of us assume maybe it would be Kashin Kojin, but that's not the case. It's Delta. And it's very interesting that it's Delta that he brought, which makes me kind of wonder maybe if whether or not Delta is actually his daughter that he saved and revived into a cyborg. It's going to be interesting to find out who it is, but uh, it's either her or it's Ada. Well, we'll have to see. But yeah, Shigamaru big brain like he lured cold into a trap he used a mod as bait so they could then bring out delta to deal with him because as long as these limiters are on cold probably won't be able to you know fight one-on-one -on -one with delta here and she was like she's a new model uh reprogrammed to be a battle assassin that protects konoha delta your target is cold he's an enemy of konoha and yeah her personality is still intact i know i know shut up already don't keep screeching like a darn fool all right and she uses her leg to basically, you know, shoot it out and trap uh, Cold into a wall. And Amada, Amada's released, by the way, so he's fine. And Chikamaro, big brain, approaching him, going, I guess that if I approached Amada with a few to no guards, you might show up, Cold. It'd be too good of an opportunity for an idiot like you to pass up. And then, and then Delta's like, I'll spare you my one-hit destructive beings, since they'll wreck havoc too much. Since since they'll wreck too much havoc in this enclosed space. So yeah, Delta can one-shot code, but she's not going to because there's people and stuff around. So yeah, honestly, I just feel like this is uh, uh, Kishimoto's explanation of why he just doesn't have a kill him straight away. It's like, oh yeah, because there's people there. But it's like, it's like no, get a modder, get Shikamaru, and just leave the room, and then just tell. Delta to laser beam his ass. That's it. Done. Do you know what I mean? Like, but that, that doesn't happen. And we see Cold having uh, already set up some claw marks on the walls. And he sticks his hand in there and he's like, the Shikamaru sees this like he's right hand with the claw mark. Bastard, I won't let you escape. And then something happens to Shikamaru. Like, I don't know if he gets hit back or something. Uh, I think someone might have kicked him back because, like, he does this and he's like, huh? So I don't know if someone hit him and that. But, but we see we see Cold basically pull out Ada. Ada ends up coming out of the claw marks. Shikamaru, Delta, Amada, they're all shocked to see it. And, and Code's like, escape? Quite the op opposite. And yeah, Ada finally revealing, himself, revealing herself to them. Amada sees, sees her. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this is recognition or a hint of fear or realization, all of the above. I don't know if he knows her. I'm assuming he does. Is it possible that he does? He does. Oh, he does. Sorry, my bad. He does recognize her because, uh, yeah, as she steps out, you know, she grows like, gah, comrade of codes. And Delta, I don't know if Delta might recognize her. She does give her this look. But Amada definitely recognizes her because, like, Ada? Like, yeah, and he seems terrified of her being there. Now, is she actually his daughter? Because if she is, that would mean that Dumon is also his son, right? So that's a bit of a confusion there of what's going on. Like, 
And why, why, why were they supposed to be scrapped? Like, what was going on with that? Like, did Jigen, did he save them? Did he give them too much power? And then Jigen was like, yo, get rid of these guys or, you know, I'm going to kill you. And that's what Omada did. And this whole time, he's just trying to, he's been trying to get revenge on them. Uh, and that's why he defected against Kara. And that's why he's joined Konoha. Uh, because he, he didn't know about his door being still being alive. And now that he knows, what does this mean? Like, if, the, if this is his door, actually, you know, that, that if she is... And he's assumed this whole time that she's been dead and she's actually been alive. What is this going to mean for Omada? Is he going to change sides now or, or what? But if she's not his daughter, he does clearly recognize us. What does that mean? Did he Was he the one who turned her into a cyborg and worked on her? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this revelation next chapter. But uh, yeah, at this point, things are heating up. We, we, we just had like this big encounter ending last chapter. And now we're heading straight into another conflict. So yeah, this this I don't even know if this arc. I, I'm assuming this this arc that we're on is still the same arc and it's still ongoing. But uh, yeah, insanity, insanity ensuring, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a decent chapter. Uh, it doesn't uh, what's the word? It's not very slow paced as like you think. It's very fast paced. Things are moving and progressing at a good speed. But it's just a case of, you know, I want to see what other characters are doing. I want to see what other characters are thinking and what they feel. And we don't see that. And that's one of the big disappointments when it comes to this manga. We don't get any real world building or character development. It's just, it's just basic plot points, basically. It's like, this is, what the manga for me is, it's basically a summary of all the latest hits of things happening. This happens, this happens, this happens. And what the anime does is it expands and develops certain things. This happens, this happens. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You know, the anime is not perfect, but it, in my opinion, it does a better job than anything that the manga has done so far. But it'll be interesting to see how the, the anime tackles this adaptation and how much of it it extends or changes up or adds to it. But yeah, overall, decent chapter. Uh, and I honestly I can't wait for next week uh, next month and to see how this will conclude but yeah I hope you guys like that as always guys remember to like and subscribe whatever and I shall see you when I shall see you take care